tend to hear a lot of bad news about salmon here on the west coast uh, over the last number of years. Much of it has been uh, driven by impacts to habitat in the freshwater phase of their life cycle, but a lot of the recent years uh, uh, ret uh, bad news stories have come from ocean conditions which have been very poor for salmon since about 2014. However, that has changed in, over the last couple of years. So this is a story uh, of recovery, a really interesting story of recovery that I think is worth telling to let people know that when people take action and thoughtful action to try to restore salmon habitat, salmon will respond. And when we get good ocean conditions, which we are just moving into good ocean conditions here in 2022, uh, those salmon ferns can return quite spectacularly. So here, uh, this is a picture of the uh, sockeye salmon in the Penticton Channel. That's the channel that flows from Okanagan Lake down to Skaha Lake. It's a totally man-made channel. It's straight, straight. It was excavated for drainage, but over the years, there's been an effort to make that habitat much more amenable for spawning salmon, particularly sockeye salmon. Uh, but more importantly, all the barriers downstream have been dealt with that salmon can now pass them. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about that. So this signboard you'll find along the Penticton Channel, it describes how salmon, sockeye salmon that you see spawning in the Penticton Channel in October, have swam over 1,200 kilometers from the ocean, entering the Columbia River, migrating up the Columbia River, then into the Okanagan River, and finally through the various lakes, the Suez Lakes, Vassar Lakes, Skaha Lake, to find their way into the Penticton Channel. It's a great story. But some of the details that perhaps need to be told is these fish not only swam up those rivers at 1,200 kilometers, but they passed over major dams in the Columbia River and even in Canada. There's approximately 12 major dams that these fish have passed over. Bonneville is the lowermost dam in the Columbia, the Dolls Dam, John Day Dam, McNary, Priest Rapids, Wanapum, Rock Island, Rocky Reach, Wells Dam, all in the U.S. of A. in the Columbia River. These fish have climbed over these large massive dams through fishways to come home. When they enter the Okanagan River, they also climb over an irrigation dam just upstream from the town of Oliver that also has had a fishway recently uh, placed in it to allow the fish to move upstream into Can uh, farther into Canadian waters. And lastly, at Okanagan Falls, a major dam that these fish had to navigate. And again, a fish ladder was installed to allow them to move into Skaha Lake and finally into the Penticton Channel, where we're going to talk about uh, fish today spawning and uh, how those fish got there. And lastly, there has been work to allow fish through the dam at the outlet of Okanagan Lake. That means sockeye salmon will be swimming for the first time in significant numbers, I would say in 2022 into Okanagan Lake. Uh, they have in the last couple, three years since uh, uh, an experiment was run by the Okanagan Nation to allow fish back into Okanagan Lake sam salmon. And, but more fish are expected to come up and they're likely going to show up in places like Mission Creek in Kelowna. All really exciting story about recovery of salmon in a very, very human uh, developed landscape. So if you go to the Penticton Channel near the town of the uh, city of Penticton, You'll see this signboard along the river edge, and it describes the various uh, groups that have been involved in this restoration uh, activity to try to get sockeye to return to the Penticton Channel. And it's been led by the Okanagan Nation Alliance, and they have a small hatchery facility uh, in, in, in the vicinity of Penticton, and they've been working for a number of years to, to do a number of things. But the major activities they've done is to work with the various entities to make sure that all the barriers to salmon downstream of the Penticton Channel, Channel are accessible to salmon. Now that hasn't been the case for up almost 100 years. There's been a number of barriers that have stopped salmon reaching this part of the watershed for almost 100 years. Those have been resolved 
and uh, eggs have been moved upstream and released as small fry in the penticton channel that now has initiated a run over the last uh, approximately five years or so. Interestingly enough, this year it uh, appears that a record run of sockeye salmon are headed this way and a significant number of them will be entering the Penticton Channel for spawning, which is really exciting. So I'll give you an example. Uh, when the, the fish leave saltwater and enter the Columbia River, the very first barrier they run into is Bonneville Dam, which was built in 1939, the first major dam on the Columbia River. So in 1939, they, ca they counted 79,000 sockeye salmon migrating upstream. Because when you have a dam, you have a fishway, and that allows you a very precise count. This year, the run isn't complete migrating over Bonneville Dam. There's approximately 650,000 sockeye migrating upstream. The significant majority of those fish are, in fact, bound for rivers in Canada. And they're often bound for areas that have been recently reopened for salmon access in the Okanagan watershed. This is a tremendously good news story and really exciting for the groups that have worked really hard to see this restoration recovery effort succeed. So on your walk along the Penticton Channel, this is another signboard you'll encounter. And it describes more some of the, um, talks a bit more about the restoration activities undertaken in the Penticton Channel itself. And as we discussed, it was a man-made channel, primarily to drain the lands for development uh, not quite a hundred years ago, um, but it wasn't designed for salmon. So the Okanagan Nation Alliance and their partners in Canada and the US contributed uh, expertise and funding to lay a series of gravel beds along the base of the channel in a number of places and some boulder clusters to enhance it for rearing species like uh, juvenile uh, rainbow and trout and perhaps Chinook salmon in the future. But primarily it was focused on creating these large gravel beds for sockeye salmon that previously did not exist in the Penticton Channel since it has been constructed primarily because of barriers downstream that I described. So this restoration activity was done over a number of years. The barriers downstream have been dealt with over decades of effort. And recently, all the barriers have been open to salmon migration. And finally, salmon were placed here as little fish that had been used in a, uh, created by a conservation hatchery uh, run by the partnership, the Oakland on Okanagan Nation Alliance partnership, and they placed little juvenile fish hoping they would come back as adults. In the last few years, number of years, five or six years, in fact, those adults have been returning and spawning successfully and rearing downstream in Skaha Lake. And those adults now are returning in 2022, and also the adults returning from those fry released from the, from the hatchery program. So taking the hatchery program fry from the natural uh, production from these gravel beds, 2022 is going to see a record run of soccer salmon returning to the Penticton Channel. And hopefully uh, many people will get a chance to observe this wonderful story of recovery of salmon in an urban and developed landscape that will give them hope that perhaps on their watersheds, no matter how degraded, Efforts can be made to restore their salmon across the streams of British Columbia. So I became aware of this uh, population of salmon through connections I had through people in the Okanagan Nation Alliance, uh, people that run a small hatchery to reestablish sockeye in this area. They hadn't been here for a good part of 100 years. So it took a little effort, human help, to get fish to want to return to this river. The river itself has been channelized. So this, uh, the group led by Okanagan Nation Alliance put large spawning beds of gravel in this channel, anticipating these fish would return. Now that was a hopeful anticipation. There wasn't a strong indication they would, but in fact they have. And it appears this year they're gonna return spectacularly. So about two, since about 2018, I've been making an annual 
uh, visit to this uh, area, and I found there's actually a reasonably good uh, walk loop, great trails both sides of the river, and a river crossing downstream on a bridge near the golf course that will give you about a 3.5 kilometer loop, which I call the sockeye salmon loop walk. And I'm suggesting to anyone that wants to listen, this is a great natural spectacle that shouldn't be missed. And another part of the BC story, the BC salmon story that I hope gives hope to others that recovery is possible. So just on the practical, uh, logistics of getting to this place. I find there's a little parking area not too far from where the large paddle wheeler is beached on the beach of Okanagan Lake in Penticton. There's a park, there's various parking spots in that area. And then you walk across the dam at the outlet of uh, Okanagan Lake, which previously had denied fish access to Okanagan Lake, but recently has been opened up. And that's the beginning of your walk, the 3.5 kilometer salmon walk to see sockeye salmon in Penticton in the month of October. So this is what you're going to see as you walk down the channel. These beautiful gravel beds were placed by the hand of people and led again by Okanagan Nation Alliance folks and all their various partners, including fisheries and oceans and various community groups. But this gravel was hauled in there to create ideal conditions uh, for sockeye salmon. And all those little dots are sockeye defending their reds all across the gravel. And I suspect this year, every square meter of gravel will be occupied by sockeye salmon. This will be a great place to see these fish uh, the water coming out of Okanagan Lake is always crystal clear. You have good uh, trails for even for people with uh, limited mobility down both sides. You're near the community of Penticton for both accommodation and just enjoying the Okanagan experience. I really believe that this is one of the, uh, the premier destinations for viewing salmon in a very unique situation and with a fantastic story of recovery. If each of those fish could talk 1200, 1,200 kilometers up a major river fighting the current, over 27 structures overcome, and where they end up are these peaceful flows digging their reds and placing their eggs for the next generation of hope. So toward the bottom end of the loop I showed on the previous slides, this is the crossing of the, of the river on a bridge in the golf course area. And it just gives you a whole different perspective looking down, watching these beautiful fish, picking their reds, finding the gravel between the coarse boulders to create their reds and get those eggs into the gravel safely for a quiet winter before spring comes and those fry head downstream for their own challenges getting over those 27 structures on the way down. Again, just a great place to watch salmon on a sunny fall day in the Okanagan. I think all of us in BC know the Okanagan in the fall is a beautiful, beautiful place between the colors in the orchard, the wine culture, the beautiful lakes, the, the fresh air. But if you are there sometime between the two weekends of October 15th and October 23rd, that is approximately the peak spawning of these sockeye. I guarantee you, if you take the walk, you're going to have an excellent and beautiful experience watching salmon in a beautiful place and thinking what we can do in the future for our other salmon runs throughout British Columbia that are challenged by many, many different factors. But in the Okanagan, even under almost insurmountable odds, we have this spectacular uh, experience of nature in our own backyard. We should be very proud to be British Columbians and be very thankful for hard work that people have put into this to make it happen.